In the late 1980s, Professor Dr. Jacques Benveniste, at that time director of the Immunology of Allergy and Inflammation Unit at the French National Institute of Health and Medical Research, Paris, created polemics in the entire medical community and became a media sensation all over the world. He discovered that water has an electromagnetic memory system. According to Dr. Benvenist, when it comes in contact with another substance, water is capable to memorize the molecules it entered in contact with, and, billions of billions of dilutions after, it still knew that it had seen those molecules. In Professor Benvenist's words, water has memory and it behaves like a liquid magnetic tape. He sent his research to the prestigious British journal Nature for publication. However, because Benveniste's findings were defying at that time the conventional understanding of science. And even today, the concept that water has memory might seem depicted from some sci-fi movie. John Maddox, the then Nature's editor, agreed to publish them with an unusual condition. A team of experts selected by Nature to be allowed to investigate Dr. Benveniste's laboratory following publication. Professor Benvenist accepted the condition and, after a lengthy review process, on June 30, 1988, Nature published Benvenist's paper. Shortly after the publication, Nature sent his team of experts to the French National Institute of Health and Medical Research. Yet, although Professor Benvenist's discovery was related to molecular biology, immunology, and immunopathology, Nature's committee of experts was formed of Walter Stewart, a chemist and freelance debunker, James Randi, a magician and paranormal researcher, and John Maddox, Nature's editor, who was skeptic even before the paper was published. After spending a week in Benvenist's laboratory, questioning his team, investigating notebooks from earlier experiments, taking pictures, and setting up video cameras, Nature's team of experts conducted a single experiment and concluded that the phenomenon described is not reproducible. Professor Benvenist charged the investigators with amateurism, who failed to get to grips with our biological system and rushed in their conclusions. He accused Nature's team of mockery of scientific inquiry and complained that the investigators created an atmosphere of constant suspicion, they arrived without a prior plan, and, based on only one week of investigation, they would blot out five years of our work and that of five other laboratories. Clearly, the short-sightedness of two high priests of orthodox science and a prestidigitator have delayed the advance in chemistry and biology by ten years, complained Benvenist. Regardless, after Nature published its final conclusions, Professor Benvenist became a pariah in the medical community. He lost his job at the French National Institute of Health and Medical Research, and his work is regarded today as a fraud by the mainstream scientific community. Nevertheless, more than a decade later, Professor Dr. Luc Montagne, a joint recipient of the 2008 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, and his team from the Pasteur Institute in Paris, resumed Professor Benveniste's research, and they managed to teleport human DNA and reconstruct it out of pure water. Scientists diluted two nanograms of DNA molecules from an HIV-infected patient in distilled water, took one part of the resulted dilution, and mixed it again in another nine parts of pure water, repeating the procedure up to ten times. If the procedure would have been carried out until the 24th dilution, it would have been the equivalent of diluting one drop of the original DNA into the Atlantic Ocean. Yet, even at the 10th dilution, from a chemical point of view, not only a single molecule of DNA should have remained in the water. The researchers recorded the electromagnetic signal emitted by the highly diluted solution and sent it as an email attachment in Italy, at the University of Sanio, Benevento, located 1,500 kilometers away, famous for the quality of its laboratories specialized in molecular biology. In Italy, the procedure from France was carried out the other way around by Professor Dr. Giuseppe Vitiello, an authority in the field of quantum field theory and nonlinear dynamical systems. Professor Vitiello downloaded the email attachment and played the electromagnetic signals to an isolated tube containing only pure water. After about an hour, 
during which the water from Italy listened to the electromagnetic signals recorded in France, Dr. Vitiello applied the polymerase chain reaction technique and successfully reconstructed the original DNA sequence, although there were no physical DNA molecules present, and the water from Italy never came into contact with the original mother tincture, located more than a thousand kilometers away. This fact makes a lot of people grind their teeth because it is not so easy to explain," declared Professor Montagnier in an interview for the French TV channel France 5, aired in 2014. These facts are very hard to admit for a certain number of our colleagues, including Nobel laureates, who are discussing very fiercely these ideas, but these are facts, facts established through reproducible scientific experiments," continued Dr. Montagnier. Scientists detected signals which persist at very high dilutions, not only from the DNA of patients infected with HIV, but also from the DNA of patients suffering from autism, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and multiple sclerosis. Professor Montagnier also managed to imprint the water with particular frequencies, which can kill the waves produced by the bacterial DNA, and he strongly believes that his findings can be used both for diagnostic and treatment. Unfortunately, because of the French retirement law, Professor Montagnier wasn't been able to continue his studies in a public institution, and, due to the controversial nature of his research, his funding applications had been turned down. After all, the pharmaceutical industry is just another business, one of the most profitable, I might add. In 2017, the long-time researcher at the Pasteur Institute had to leave his home country to continue his work in China. I have visited Jiao Tong University several times, and they are quite open-minded," declared Professor Dr. Montagne in an interview for Science Magazine. I have been offered a professorship and a new institute, which will bear my name, to work on a new scientific movement at the crossroads of physics, biology, and medicine. The main topic will be this phenomenon of electromagnetic waves produced by DNA in water. We will study both the theoretical basis and the possible applications in medicine," said Professor Montagne. All there is to hope is that in the future, this type of research will be embraced with an open mind by the mainstream medical community, and we will be able to continue uninterrupted our daily life without having to wait months for whatever vaccine. And, why not, perhaps by using water as a medium, scientists will be able to develop a cure for all diseases, accessible at a reasonable price, or even for free, to all mankind.